um, I was basically just banging nails into the in, into the Macintosh wooden panels, which was probably illegal or whatever. I distinctly remember going in uh, one particular morning into into the art school, being on a bus, I think on a Woodlands Road or something, looking at the bus driver and thinking, Jesus, I mean, what's it like to be normal? You know, just have a normal life rather than all this working through the night, felt like a baker or something. Um. The fight, not fighting, the, um, the, the allocation of space, our room that we were in had traditionally had three people in the room and we were four people, so fighting for the space for the show, that was the biggest thing. My mum made me a tartan suit uh, and I remember the stress of kind of like going home and getting, you know, I was like worried about my work and like getting things ready on time. But at the same time, my mum was like phoning me up, getting all stressed about my tartan suit that she was making me. And I was like, no, oh, man, is this, uh, have I asked for too much? Um, but it all worked out in the end. She made me this really cool tartan suit out of like the family tartan and stuff like that, which, uh, <laughs> which I totally wrecked on the Grisho night. Uh, like, pretty much within the first hour, I'd bent over and ripped the bum in the, in the trousers. Um, the time leading up to my degree show, as I remember, it was, um, I remember the week before when you had to do it, the week, the kind of zenith of uh, activity at the art school, it came, um, this was 1991, and it was the, uh, the week where it was the last episode of Twin Peaks you know, David Lynch's Twin Peaks, and um, we'd been watching it. I think there were, there were 24 episodes, and we'd watched every episode. Lots of people came around our house every time it was on, and we had drinks and stuff and made a party of it. And then that one week, we missed the last episode, you know, having watched 23 episodes. And, uh, yeah, I just forgot to watch it or something. It was just really stressful. I mean, obviously, I was installing whatever or doing something and I missed it and I, to this day I've never seen it you know and it totally spoiled the whole the whole series really and there was <laughs> people getting carried out down the stairs crying for joy or crying for <coughs> you know, in, in pain <laughs> uh, so that's quite funny the actual night I, I remember the degree show night because I remember just feeling like the cleanest I'd felt in months <laughs> drank a lot of warm white wine um, and then ended up in the Vic, and I do seem to remember sitting on the curb in Renfrew Street, weeping at some point, but uh, I think that's pretty much par for the course. <laughs> when you put the show up, you'd celebrate, and then you had some kind of like marking day where you go out and celebrate, and then you had like some kind of like private business view where you kind of go out and celebrate. So I was kind of exhausted, to be honest, and I didn't kind of, I didn't make it out very late. I think I was back in bed by like, 12 or something? Um, I remember friend, lots of friends taking Pro Plus and everybody being quite manic, um, but not necessarily in a bad way. Two days before I had to have the show finished, and yeah, I broke my left hand and I'm left handed, so I hadn't made any work um, and uh, I could do a fairly good impression of uh, the, the thinker, but uh, they were like curled to try and reform the knuckles. But um, yeah, so essentially I couldn't make anything uh, myself and I had to point and direct people to paint things or uh, move things, which was incredibly embarrassing and uh, frustrating. And they told me that if I didn't go upstairs and finish the subject of the the examination for the degree show, I would not get my degree at all. Um, and so I went straight upstairs and and uh, and I think in an afternoon I, I, I finished a decoration there that that um, a mermaid and uh, and a man with a knife and fork who seems interested in fish and chips. Or, or eating her, uh, or the, at least the fishy part, uh, and um, and then went back to the to the uh, to, to work on my mural. Anyway, I, I, I got my degree and a Bella Houston travelling scholarship, 
So I was not penalised. I'd went to her pals and I thought it'd be a great idea to wear her dress to um, the degree show and um, it was a wee black dress and I was about three stone lighter then. I thought I carried it off all right. I do remember what I was wearing because I think that lovely lull between setting up your debris show and the actual show time um, was good shopping, shopping time. It was just, just a black dress from TK Maxx. <laughs> you go away for a wee drink and you come back and you, you listen to somebody talking about your work and praying to God that it's a decent thing they're saying about it because otherwise it can really just totally cut you right down, you know. Sad. There was this moment where we, me and Bob got invited into like the Sandy Moffat's office with all the t all the tutors and um, went in and uh, so drunk fell off my chair. And then, and you know that moment when you just, they still mean so much to all the tutors and I remember telling him, I'm going to tell anyone to see me. And he was just like, everybody saw it, everybody. And then sort of sloping off in this like red corduroy jumpsuit. And I remember sort of standing there and your mum and dad come and your sister and you know it's all sort of family and you get flowers and it's nice and this I really enjoyed the whole thing you know and it's funny because you you're quite excited about what you're going to do next you know and in a way for me it was the beginning of something you know and that that's what it felt like really for me because I don't I'd never really made a show before you know of my work, you know, really during the art college of crits and things like that, but individual pieces, but you never really, although we'd done public projects, you know, with environmental art and they were around the city and you'd have a crit, you never, I never really felt of it like a show, you know, but that was the first show that I'd really ever done. I think when you're making art in art school, it's really good, it's a good environment and stuff, but in a funny way, it's like a, it's a really artificial environment, it's a total artifice, so you're, you're kind of, expected to be at a certain point at a certain time. I think that generates a lot of the stress. After that, that's not the case. It's kind of a relief after that, actually, because you realise that when you do another show, people are just like, right, let's see what you can do, put a show together. It's much more flexible. There's nobody with boxes to tick, you know, so it allows you to do what you do rather than... than uh... So maybe it's good in that way, you know, maybe it sort of sets you up by sort of striking terror into your heart first time. Then after that, everything's kind of a breeze, you know. So yeah, maybe that's its best feature, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I can't nostalgia. I know that's weird because at the time, yeah, it felt nostalgic at the time. I kind of projected nostalgia. Tried to get a glass, we tried to get a glass of champagne to fly in the air by attaching all the helium balloons to it. <laughs> we did it, but the, the bouncer wouldn't let us, she wasn't into it. We had to sneak out, because it was a glass, you know, because it was going to drop on somebody at some point. Or it could have just come down and just, you know, glass of champagne. First exhibition, you know, uh, it was a big thrill and it, it was great. And uh, I remember, I, it's good. I didn't really think about it until they were there, but um, when my parents were over and at final age, they sort of got to find out a wee bit more about what about about me and my friends, and you know, maybe realised um, for the first time that I was an artist. <laughs>